On September 14, 2001, you said that the Americans should have been Muslim countries and, and convert them to Christianity. You also said that they should get all the Muslims to boycott all airlines. When asked what the alternative modes of transportation were, you suggested flying carpet. <laughs>
He gave Israel an ultimatum. He said they were having some construction in East Jerusalem, where there's a whole Palestine incident. What do you think the implications of Obama's actions towards his relationship with the U.S. and Israel are going to have on either the Middle East and like the world in general? What is this going to cause? Um, as, as I've been telling people, watching Obama handling foreign policy, I now remember from when I was a little girl what, what that look on my father's face was throughout the Carter administration. Um, I think it's going to be very, very bad. Um, I, I mean, it's interesting that, that, that liberals understand um, how fear and intimidation um, you know, they use that method against conservatives, they won't use it against our, our enemies. No, there they expect, you know, Obama just, to just go over to, um, to, to the Muslim world and they'll all get tingles up their legs, um, the way TV hosts in America do, and he'll just be so charming. Well, no, it doesn't work like that. And, and you want to bring peace. Um, look, I, I, I think the simplest way to put this is you cannot force people to like you, you can force people to fear and respect you. And he just thinks that, well, what the media keeps telling him, he is so cool when he smokes. <laughs> I, am, um, I don't agree with everything you say, but I think you're the gushiest person I've ever heard speak. <laughs> the political spectrum. I don't consider myself somebody who's left and more right wing. I like to remain neutral a little bit as much as possible. My friend Michael Stone down the right wing, uh, front row actually sent me an email saying he started doing a B button and called me up when he left it. That's okay. We're friends. Um, I just wanted to know, in terms of, you've been doing a lot of criticizing, you've been criticized a lot yourself and you've taken it, and I give you props for that as well, but I just want, I'm wondering what you would consider to be kind of an ideal society. I know we can't talk in terms of, you know, a golden age where everything's nice and pretty and stuff like that, but you talk a lot about how people are criticized and how people throw criticisms around. So in terms of free speech, what would you like to what's your ideal society for both ends of the spectrum? Oh, I thought it was my ideal society generally, which would be no liberals and like seven <laughs> gallon gallon flush toilet. My ideal world for freedom of speech is it's it's freedom of speech. <laughs> it's you can say anything and let the winners and lo losers, um, let them, get, I promise you people are smart enough to figure out um, the Holocaust deniers haven't developed much of a following in America. And yet they have full freedom of speech in America. Um, and I mean, it allows people to understand error and to do thinking for themselves. It's part of living in a free society. Um, I, I would limit it to speech, however, and not to oh, nudie dancing and whether or not the strippers have to wear pasties as the Supreme Territory the Supreme Court has entered into. Um, I, no, not symbolic speech, not you know close-up photos of women's vaginas. Speech. That's what the First Amendment refers to, and that's what I believe in. First off, uh, I love everything you have to say. Honestly, Ed, you kick fucking ass. <laughs> Secondly, um, I actually want to know which months did you suggest for having this like anti-gay monitoring thing? I think no, it's not an anti-gay. You also were not listening. What is it with you people? Would you listen to the speech? It's a moratorium on talking about all things gay. Then you can resume your frenzy. Next question. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Okay, so a few things. Um, I'm a proud secular progressive, and I just wanted to say that there's an impression being given tonight that conservatives own free speech. As a secular progressive with many friends, I mean, I can tell you that I don't have a single friend among this group that would not defend your right to speak, even if we disagree with you. And I supported uh, Ezra Hunt um, throughout. Um, so that was my first point. Second off is one of incomplete information. I hope you sweep the nation. <laughs> All right. The second thing is you mentioned the differential treatment for Harry Reid when you talked about you know, Barack Obama's race. True. But that happens on both sides. When you have a family values conservative in America and they spend years and years campaigning on like, you know, 
protecting marriage and whatnot, and then they go and get down getting, you know, bust cheating on their wife for years on end. All they do is go call up Jesus on the phone and say sorry, and that will give them on the conservative side. No, but what you're talking about there is a personal failing as opposed to what the outside world is saying. I promise you, no one says when a conservative Christian Republican gets caught um, having an affair, oh, it's okay, we know what's in his heart. Other people don't say that. We're talking about the reaction of the world to words that are said by the same people. You're bringing up a personal failing, and I can promise you, I'm not saying I can see what's in their hearts. I'm saying let's get rid of him. And that's usually what happens in, in districts where Republicans could be elected in the first place. Historically, when they get caught cheating on their wives, they're out. By the way, historically, Democrats are not out. So you can see the Republicans are holding their own people to the standard they are espousing. Hi. Um, I, uh, I'm kind of like Voltaire. I might disagree with some of what you have to say, but I defend to the death your right to say it. Um, but uh, at the same time, I, uh, at, at, the, at the same time, in, in reference uh, to what you said to that Muslim girl up there, I guess my question would be, why do you have to be such a bitch about it? <laughs> Because I was giving an informative answer that might have taught the audience something, and they started screaming to answer the question. Well, there was only one question in her long speech, and the one question was, how do you expect me to travel? Referring to a joke I had made. So if that's the only thing your little crowd in the room wanted me to do, answer that one question, you're going to get another joke. And by the way, I would also like to say this is not based on hate, and I would encourage all of you to listen carefully to what I'm saying now. There was, many years ago, um, a surgical procedure performed on, on children after they were born, removing their sense of humor, uh, removing a sense of irony or sarcasm. And I think they've caught it and stopped it recently, but they still walk among us. They're known as liberals, and we must spend pity and concern for them. How many more questions? Pardon? How many more questions? Well, we do have a dinner appointment. Why don't we wrap it up with two? We'll take one from each side. So make it good. Okay. Uh, my question has to do earlier with what you're talking about and the way that you say liberals have this way of saying, oh, it's similar to the right. same as, right? So, and I totally agree with you about the fact that I actually think that Obama has done a decent job, but I agree absolutely that the media has done a horrible job on reporting on it. So my question is, though, that you accuse liberals of doing these things, of constantly equating these ridiculous assumptions, while you're part of the side that keeps saying he's a Marxist, he's a Leninist, he's a socialist, <laughs> things that are so ridiculous. Okay, there's another question someone who didn't listen to my speech. Did I call? I don't think I ever have. So save that for Glenn Beck, baby cakes. Next question. Hi, everyone. It's Neil. Um, I was hoping to tease out uh, the difference between free speech and, uh, and hate speech. So my question free speech on what? Free speech and hate speech. I want to kind of tease out the difference. So my question is, your kid comes home from school one day, and she says that the teacher has No, I don't think there is a difference. You're starting on a line that makes no sense. What's the difference in a beagle and a dog? <laughs> no, free speech is free speech. You can label that speech hateful, you can call it loving, you can call it as my speech in defense of humorless liberals just was, deeply sympathetic and heartfelt. You can call it whatever you want, but there's free speech or there is censorship. So you're starting with a premise that makes no sense, and I want to thank you all for being here tonight.